recording. Economic value of 3D printing from trash, given 150, just the review, 150 million tons of waste plastic are generated per year, which is enough for about 15 million houses at 10 tons of trash per house. <laughs> I'm speaking bluntly here, because uh, these are going to be beautiful houses. Um, yeah. And if you m multiply that by 50,000 that we can make per after cost, and this, this is our current model that it's about 50k cost, 50k revenue on top of that, we're making 750 billion out of 15 million. 15 million times 50,000 is 750 billion. Mm -hmm. Now that's significant. And what's the argument on can we capture even a small fraction of that? Well, it's entrepreneurial savvy. If we can pull off this contest, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think it, there's no short answer outside of focus, hard work, uh, but we don't have to do it all alone. This is the purpose of collaboration. That's if we can, if we can collaborate to do this, that's the, that's the kind of message we gotta be putting out. The, it's a $750 billion market right now that's not being tapped. It's ending up polluting our environment. Let's do something yeah. about it, people, and organize. So our challenge, I think, a lot is to communicate that message effectively. Right. Um, like, like so, you said, we already have the infrastructure. You have the plastic shredder, and you, can, you know, we can make the printer. Well, like, there is... It's bigger scale of it. Yeah, yeah. We ha I mean, you have to be careful kind of like how you say that, because we, we do and we don't, right? We have to develop to that, right. that level. Um, but I think all the indications are there that, that it's quite doable and we can definitely on paper see that, okay, you do this and then you get this result. So we can engineer a system that does that. So I think it's quite doable. Um, but then to get to the, those prototypes and, and machines that are robust and work well, that takes the effort. And that's, that's where we need the collaboration because just like in software, it takes hundreds and thousands of iterations until you get it absolutely right. It's, that's just the development process. That's the nature of it. So um, that's where we're at on it. I'd love to see the, uh, also the, like for earthen printing, like we do compressed earth block, but you know, imagine chewing up the soil and adding concrete that you generated from local local rock on site. Uh, very interesting and it's especially relevant to other planets. If you can do that on other planets, like people are talking like, okay, Mars, well, how are you gonna do it there? You're gonna have to do something like that. Um, so do you, um, did you see the challenge that NASA put out recently to 3D print Mars habitats? Oh yeah, yeah, I've seen a little bit of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were and making like egg-shaped houses. Yeah, and um, yeah, I'd be curious, like you know, with the discussion before about proprietary, like, okay, is the result open or is it just a proprietary effort? Are they going to actually publish that? I think they're going to publish, but if you look at that contest, I don't think it's collaborative. I haven't seen anything else that it's not. has been collaborative. It was uh, strictly competitive. Yeah. So let's do better and see see what we can do. But I mean, I don't know. I don't understand why people don't get that part. Do we think yeah. that actually people are, will not be motivated because they're collaborating? I don't think so. Maybe we gotta. Um, maybe it's a block for some people, but in general, I don't think that's the block. Um, so that still is a qu live question. Why aren't people designing these contests to be collaborative? What do you guys think? Why, why well, people, people are afraid of being copied, but. It's Most people aren't going to go and copy like your work. This weird mental model people have yeah. that you can only do that in a proprietary way. And there is 200 years of proprietary industrial history, which influences the way people think. But it's so funny to see people trapped in that. Like People just can't leave that. And Yeah, and I seems think there's, there's also been a lot of difficulty developing business models around open source hardware. Um, That's right. I mean... There's been, like, like I had mentioned on another day, that there had been different projects that uh, they were successful at first, and then um, Texas Instruments decides, you know, we can do this at scale at a cheaper price than they can, and then uh, all of a sudden they uh, realize, okay, now that Texas Instruments is in the game, we have to develop niche products. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and so I think there needs to be more creativity around mm -hmm. um, yeah. creating business models that work for open source hardware. Yeah, so I think, part, yeah, yeah, no, that's true though. And we have to design some of that into this saying, this is how the revenue model would work. 
at the end of the day. So one is the developing, developing the incentive challenge, like Christian was saying. Second one is, okay, if we build these houses, uh, what about it makes it that it's not going to get sucked up by an evil corporation? Well, I think it's the simple fact that it's open source and decentralized. We're designing a decentralized product, a collaborative product. So we have to, the people we absorb into the, the effort, they have to get the idea that we're collaborating and um, there's one of their, I mean, there's definitely revenue, right? Right. There's money involved, but then it's to really solve a, a problem, a pressing issue. I mean, that's the, that's really the bulk of the Yeah. Um, well, is it is the fact that um, it will be potentially a niche product because um, I don't know if you can take plastic lumber and build in a, a city. Part of it is getting a, this contest is going to involve stuff like getting certification. The, That's right. where this becomes bigger than I, I mean, this is big, like just like Boxable. They're, they got their stuff certified and stuff like that. That's part of it. Okay. That's that's going to be part of the business development. Pushing for the changes that are necessary to be able to build in a way. That, not even that, changes. It's still safe. It still works. It's not even changes. It's just certification. Here's a stamp that says this is a legit this is product. Acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we. That's part of the game. Because uh, so we're innovating on several fronts here. But all the due diligence, like any company, we're solving business problems. That's a business problem for anybody. Right, like, okay, is that going to be certified? Just like Boxable, they had a business problem. Can they certify their house so they don't have to mess with codes a lot, right? Yeah, right. Uh, this is nothing different than industry standard. Yeah. But the point is we have to do those steps. They're part of the game. And that's why we need so many people and so much collaboration. So we're designing the business model around that. I think the, the short answer to the question, okay, now what's the revenue model around it? We're designing, I think the short answer is we're designing for distributed production. So... The business model is based on here you you have about 5,000 or 10,000 in capital, maybe more, but we're reducing the capital barriers way down, right? Mm -hmm. Build one house and you pay back for this. The challenging part is getting that technology to the point that it's ready for prime time, that you can just relatively simply go either have like a community facility where, oh yeah, I'm going to rent this facility for a few days. I'm going to make my uh, panels. That could be a business model. You have to design it in, um, how, however we do it. So, but like up front, you can think creatively and say, okay, whether it's a, like a community-based manufacturing facility, business model, or it's entrepreneurs just going off independently around the world, some franchise, open franchise, training operation. How are you going to roll it out? We have to think about it. We have to propose some solutions on that. So, so I would say that's like business development. Here's some value propositions we're creating and pursuing, actually executing on those value propositions here's the operations that substantiate that and this is the the dollars we're going to see and make a livelihood while absolutely collaborating the whole time right <clears throat> so uh it's all new because people don't think about this right. but that's great it's an opportunity it's a challenge and an opportunity everything's that like that yeah. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we have to give some thought to that and we already are and we're moving this forward so this is good yeah and I'm recording this so we can uh, have other people contribute to this. And ideally, we would have this this effort accrete <laughs> enough mass that we solve it. And I th and the 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 lubricant here is the incentive challenge. Hopefully, so we'll see. So I think for me, I could probably be doing things like okay, let's get, let's contact some sponsors. I'm in a TED community. Uh, I'm in a Shuttleworth Fellows community. Like I got some access to. To resource that I could say, hey people, this is this is worth doing. So we have to attract them with this is purpose. We got purpose, and this is a b big, hairy, audacious goal. It's worth solving. We we asked a good question. This is the this is what we can propose to the world, and then pursue getting additional support. Yeah, and we you know we're actually doing this stuff. We're not just dreaming about this. We're building these universal axes and extruders and high temperature chambers. We can weld and 3D print and and CAD design. And we've got a posse of us here in the summer that are doing it. That's a that's already a great start. We've got some something going on. We're not just uh, bluffing. We're not kidding here. <laughs> this is possible. 
Yeah. Um, That's great. It's really promising. Yeah, it is. It is. I, I'm quite excited. So I, I'm ready. I'm ready. Um, it's 10:46. I'm gonna stick around a little more. We'll break for lunch and let's reconvene at at one. But I mean, we're still going a little more. But I think what I could do definitely, the value I could add by all means is try to see if, when we can get that 250, raise that 100 to 250. So mm -hmm. uh, maybe you guys can help me uh, write write that message. So the messaging is key and stuff like that. Um, are you guys actually writing right now or like getting the ideas down or you're studying the system? Yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to. Um, I made a wiki page just to kind of know the different things we're talking about. It's like the engineering effort, the revenue business model, the collaborative effort between the individuals that come here and um, I guess maybe the mindset, the social understanding how. Can you link that from this document? Because this is our, or did you see, you missed it, but there was a page, um, there's another link to. No, we just, uh, someone put up a template, David, who joined us, he put a template for today's day, and that was, one, I think, 120 design lessons, day three. Let's share that in the log, let's share it in the chat. I just linked from directly from my page, but I'll, I'll just add it in there, just so we all... Day three. Kind of okay, so we'll click on that link for day three, and... Let's do this like on the let's have 120 pages like this at the end of the day. But inside each, you got the working doc, you got like the video for the day, all the notes that people took, and stuff like that. So, so we could do a little template on that. Um, let's do that. So, um, and we're we already got it, we got that seeded until day nine so far, uh, just a little seed. But we can improve that and, and get the template up to up to speed. Um, seems like some of the elements are, uh, March and uh, what do you think about arrow like arrow aerocrete aerac aerated concrete what kind of applications do you think that could have yeah that's pretty good it's um but it's the more air you put in it, the weaker it is. So it's, that's kind of the trick to it. Uh, maybe you don't do structural with it if it's too airy. Mm -hmm. And um, I've never done it, so I can't I can't really comment much about it. Mm -hmm. Idea sounds right, especially once again if we go to the solar concrete part. So yeah. I think with the concrete in general, there's the idea that okay, here we have a lot of lime, but what else do you got to put in it? To make it, I think there's a lot of innovation between there's like geopolymers, concretes, and stuff like that. Like I don't think we humanity knows anything about that stuff. It's like I think there's so much room for innovation around around that, just the materials side, because uh, cement companies are going to be doing that forever. Like they're industry standard right now. They're I don't think they're innovating too much. Um, so that's like the citizen science and getting people involved in this once again, open open engineering or public engineering, as I say. Um, that could benefit everybody. Um, like geopolymers, man, that's that's a whole class of other stuff. Um, if done in a decentralized way, or or just more research around it for various different options. Just like with anything, like technology, of course, always improves. And imagine if we really unleash that kind of creative power to 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 do what's really possible. Because right now we think we're amazing and all that we've got computers but we'll look back a hundred years from now and be like wow that was dumb uh, <laughs> stuff like that <laughs> i mean that's that's just uh that's just progress and we want to use use whatever we got in a wise way and we always say that use what already exists uh don't don't need to in invent anything new right now like if we just used what what really works right now we'd already be good um so yeah Good stuff. Good stuff.
And my other question is, where are people throwing up any videos? Like, are you, are you guys uh, putting any of that on? I'm putting all my stuff on, on the OSC or my channel. Um, people are, we should be linking, once again, the main page, the 120 Design Lessons Day 3. Like, we should have links to all people's other videos. Like if you can put it up, which you did yesterday. Just keep throwing stuff up to YouTube, just an easy way to do it. Because then we can go back to it and if you think it you know might not have a lot i mean we can study it like i, I did the time lapse yesterday we can study that for information and yeah. get insights and media out of that okay. so just i mean just get it up there and that was the purpose of the oc video assets page just get um get links to everything there okay. uh, but for now we can do definitely that supports our learnings right now day three okay here's media that we can feed into it and we can pick from that later on you know, even if it seems like a bunch of random stuff, someone who's a good editor can make gold out of that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that so, was the idea. Yeah. I was trying to shoot as much. I just started yesterday shooting. Yeah. Four K video. Yeah, but is there a way you can you can upload it somewhere? Just yeah. go to YouTube, man. Just yeah. bam, we got bandwidth here. So um, yeah. yeah.